are going to need your just your drawings that you completed last week. So I hope you have done those. If you have not, go back and look at week three, and then you can work on this week for week four and our project that will continue into week five, maybe week six. We'll see how the schedule goes. So what you're gonna do today is you're gonna get out your sketchbook and you're gonna look at those drawings that you did last time. You should have done three pages with four drawings for a total of 12 quick gesture drawings, okay? So you're gonna pick one of those and we're gonna use it for this next project. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera so you can see my screen and my work surface here. All right, so we're gonna start with this gesture drawing that I did from last week. And we talked about how we have this person running. I used a mannequin, but you should be using someone in your family or maybe a photograph or a picture you found on the television. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw this again, bigger and a little bit slower to capture a little bit more detail. I'm gonna use a piece of the construction paper from my sketchbook. I'm gonna use yellow because it's light. So you should be able to see what I'm drawing as I do it. You all do not have to use yellow, but it's a good choice. Okay, fold it in half one time and then cut your paper apart. So you are gonna make your drawing nice and big this time. This extra piece, you are gonna save it and put it in your sketchbook for another project. You never know when you might need it, okay? So now you are gonna draw this same pose that's in your sketchbook again on this paper. And I would start in pencil, okay? So you wanna draw the same thing. So my head is tilted this way, okay? Nobody else is gonna see this when we're all done. So don't worry about if you mess up or if you make a mistake. Here's my upper body, the lower body. Okay, so remember this is like your hips and your waist. I have one arm going back. Here's my elbow and my wrist. All right, and you also wanna make sure that you will be able to cut this out. So if you're drawing really skinny arms, you wanna make sure they're big enough so that when you cut, you don't accidentally cut off an arm. Okay, I would say about the thickness of your pencil at least thickness of your fingers even better. Okay, this lower leg back here is going back. And it was bent just slightly. Think about your size. Remember how we talked about how we have the middle of our body and how long our legs are. We talked about not drawing SpongeBob people that have these great big bodies and little skinny legs. Also think about the weight to carry your weight this knee has to be bent just a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. I've got the same pose drawn bigger. So now this time what you're gonna do is you're gonna outline it, kind of like it's a gingerbread person, and you are going to just trace the areas where you're going to cut out. Okay, now if your person has a pose where they're kind of holding their arm or if they make a space, you can kind of color that in or cut around it. Okay, now our hips don't really go in like this. So you're gonna kind of smooth this out a little bit. Okay, make it look a little bit more smooth like a real person. And this black line or whatever color you use is where your scissors will go. All right, so take your time tracing. So you're not tracing every single part of pencil that you drew. You're tracing where your scissors will go. All right, so now you're gonna cut this out. My first gesture drawing, no one's gonna see it anymore. It's gonna move over there in my sketchbook and I'm gonna cut this part out. And what you're gonna do is you are gonna trace this onto a white piece of paper so this is kind of like your model. This is now like your Manny the Mannequin. And you were gonna make this move. So you're not doing animation, but you're gonna make it look like movement. If you look in your folder in Schoology, there's a slideshow all about a group of artists called the Futurists. And the Futurists were all about movement. When they were making artwork about 100 years ago, 
trains were getting faster, cars had been invented, and so had airplanes, and there were some wars going on in the world, and these artists were really concerned about what the future would be like, and some of us might feel that way now. These artists were thinking about how they move from one place to the other, or how they communicate. Telephones were bringing people together. Television had not been invented yet, which is kind of crazy to think that a hundred years ago the television had not been invented. Movies were starting to take place and become more widely available. They were still silent films, but you could find them a little bit easier. Think about the name of a movie film. Movie implies movement. So that whole type of art is named or showing movement. And if you notice that I kind of cut around my purse and then I'm coming back in and doing my areas that were a little trickier. Okay, and if you guys were with me last year in fourth grade, you might know I talk about the hand holding the paper being the driver to the scissors. All right, so this paper you can save or you can throw it away, it's up to you. So now this is my work paper, this is my artwork maybe a painting for an next one. And you're gonna take your purse and you're gonna trace it on here. I would use a pencil first. And it doesn't matter how you trace it, but how are you gonna make this person move? Are they gonna go for a walk? Are they gonna do some flips? Are you going to rotate them so it looks like they're spinning? Think about what kind of movement they're doing. So I'm gonna place my person here. You are not going to draw a picture with like flowers and the background and the sun. You're going to have an abstract background. You're going to show movement just with your person and then shapes and lines. So think about the futurist, how they showed that little dog on a leash moving. That's one of my favorite paintings because I just think it's so funny, but so cool. Think about how cartoons and comic books show movement. Okay. Take your time tracing. This paper is not really thick, um, so it can kind of bend and move around. So just kind of move your fingers around as you trace and be patient. Take your time. All right, now, once you have your person traced, think about how you might move them. So maybe I would trace this whole person here and kind of show them moving that way. Maybe I could have it like this person is kicking. So I might just rotate just the leg. Okay, and then maybe I'll have their arm waves. Maybe I'll just draw the arm and the elbow in a different position. I think I should have a movement kind of in between here, like this as well. There's no limit or set number on how many times you need to draw your person to make it move. There's no many, no number of times I need to see movement just try and communicate movement how would you show it would you just draw different lines or draw different shapes another thing you can do and this always this always freaks people out in class you can cut so save your body parts here but you might be able to see it better if i move the arm like it's actually moving out of the shoulder like really moving manny the mannequin you can do what I just did before, where you just kind of move around the whole drawing, or you might need to actually rotate, okay? And then you need to draw some kind of background. So is it enough just to show your person wiggling their arms and legs? No, let me see something else. So how are we gonna integrate movement in the background? Am I gonna show like lines getting bigger? and spaces getting bigger and farther away? Am I gonna draw shapes that start one way and then kind of grow into another shape? Okay, so think about how you're gonna do that. So this is really where we're gonna stop this week. We are just tracing and drawing. If you have access to paper clips, you might wanna paper clip these things together if you don't finish. Um, especially if you're going back and forth between your home and some other place like daycare or somebody else's house. This is another reason why your sketchbooks have pockets in them because you can put your entire artwork in here in a pocket and you can also put your 
just your purse and in a pocket. If you don't have a paper clip, just be really careful and kind of stick it down in here and make sure it stays safe. Next week, what we're gonna talk about is tracing with marker or coloring with marker, whatever supplies you have, and possibly maybe even painting. So boys and girls, this is where we're gonna stop this week and we will work on some of it next week. Share your progress in our photo album in Schoology and I will check where